Hi everyone, I'm just back from a day in London. I feel like I've been on an extremely mild adventure and I'd like to tell you about it. I'll start by introducing the camera I took with me, the fairly quirky, plasticky Lomo LC Wide with its 17mm lens. Through my hours of walking the streets of London, I shot just two and a half rolls of black and white Ilford FP4 Plus. Today I really felt a little closer to London, if that's not too much of a strange thing to say. I recently described the city as a place where things were always happening, but today it felt more like an ordinary day. London was humming at its usual bass hum. I didn't feel at all like a tourist. I was just there to enjoy some photography and appreciate an ordinary day in an extraordinary city. I've had quite mixed results with this Lomo camera in the past, so as I wandered around taking pictures, my confidence that these images were actually going to turn out was fairly low. But that's part of the fun, right? Well, today it especially was. It's always about much more than the final image to me. More than ever, I enjoyed looking at the city slowly and thoughtfully. Early on, I stopped across the road from a tree. When I first glanced at it, the sun had been out, but it had quickly gone in, putting the street in the shade. So I stood across from the tree, waiting patiently, tirelessly for the sun to come out again. I was honestly just enjoying the moment, partly humorously aware of just how much time I had on my hands, but mostly just enjoying waiting, enjoying having nowhere particular to go. You can enjoy a peaceful day like that any time of course, but photography is a great excuse to slow down and it helps take in the world around you. It was a slow day, but the sun wasn't beating. As the day progressed, the sun shone even less. It wouldn't be unfair to say that mostly very little has been lost by taking these pictures in black and white, but it was a beautiful day in its own grey way. As you might imagine, while taking pictures and looking for pictures, I was conscious of two main things, that I was shooting in black and white, and that I was shooting with a pretty wide 17mm lens. Thinking of that, I mostly took advantage of London's beautiful grey skylines. The views from the bridges crossing the Thames were wonderful. I got up close to a few distinctive buildings and monuments, but this was predominantly a day for taking in the big picture. A week or so ago, Tate Britain shared Jacques-Emile Blanche's 1910 painting of Ludgate Circus and just from seeing it on Instagram I immediately and completely fell in love with it. Today I walked to Ludgate Hill to see the scene as it is now. I must have spent nearly an hour stood by the side of the road trying to find bits of the painting in the present day. There were distinctive windows on a building to the left of the scene, still St Paul's Cathedral obviously still people, still red buses, but it felt less vibrant and beautiful than in the picture. I suppose that's often the way. I read that the Iron Railway Bridge was removed in the 1990s. I wish I'd seen it. Perhaps as a boy I had, but it wouldn't have meant anything to me then. As Joni Mitchell said, something's lost and something's gained. Standing there I was slightly sad, dwelling on the former, but London in 1910 was just a few years away from one heck of a war, so that something London of 2019 has got going for it, I hope. Later, still walking by the Thames, I took some pictures of Cleopatra's Needle, an Egyptian obelisk that is nearly three and a half thousand years old. It's been by the Thames for just over 140 of those years. I've seen it before, of course, but being in a more thoughtful frame of mind, I spent a while by it, read about its age, its dangerous journey to England, and took some pictures too. I also noticed for the first time 
the damage at the base of the obelisk. A small plaque explains that a bomb had fallen in the nearby road on the 4th of September 1917 from the first air raid on London in the First World War. It's amazing that the scars are still there to see. The grey stone kind of acts like photographic film, there 100 years ago to capture the explosion then remain unchanged to tell that little story all this while. So that's partly what I mean about feeling a little closer to London and to its past too. I normally just whiz in and out of the city to see a show or see a friend, but I love taking my time and seeing a few parts of the city differently. Thanks everyone for watching. It's really great to share these pictures with you. Another time I'll talk more about the camera but I hope seeing these gives you a good impression of the type of pictures it can take. If you'd like to support my channel, thumbs upping and subscribing is so helpful to me. Perhaps even more helpful is sharing the channel with a group or really cool person you think might like it. A little video about a plastic lamography camera is never gonna set the world alight, but there are some people who care and I appreciate any help in finding them. Thanks again everyone for watching. See you all soon.